Hi, everyone out there in virtual land. Welcome to Silicon Global Online. And our next victim, our next VC victim is here. Now let's please welcome him. Chibo Hello, Tang. Hi, Chibo. How's it going? Good, good. Morning your time. Early yep. morning. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Better than 7 a.m. though. It's better than 7 a.m. Yeah. We're going to have a poll about that later on, whether we should start our webinars at 4 p.m. California time or 5 p.m. California time. So right. everyone needs to stay in and get ready for that poll. Uh, and there's a few other questions we're going to have in the poll as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, stay tuned for that. Anyhow, thanks everyone for joining us. Some of you have been on our webinars before. Ask a VC anything. We started it uh, when we couldn't travel anymore. You know, I, I was supposed to be in Sydney. I was supposed to be in Hong Kong. I was supposed to be many other places and nothing except online. But mm -hmm. I like it online. I'm being very productive. I imagine everyone else is too. Innovation is at a new height and disruption is at a new height and we're all managing through this. And somebody just called me. Uh, so, okay, okay, hold on a second. Let's see what's going on. Yes, hello. Okay, we're broadcasting. Okay, let me see what's going on. People say it's not broadcasting, but I think maybe it is. Mm. Okay, thank you. Well, let's see here. That would be a first. Angela, okay, let's see. Somebody is here. There are participants here. So I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm. Well, I do see participants there. Let's see who's uh, who's saying things here. Well, we're getting very interactive very, very early on in this time around. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, you know, usually we do the interactive part a little later. Um, but um, that's great. But the chat says that you know everything is it's broadcasting. So. The chat says everything's broadcasting. Okay, yep. well then, well, you know, false alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, we're carrying on. That was a false alarm. Thank goodness for that. Okay, well, anyhow, sign up for everything we have going, all this content that's out there. Our newsletter, our circle membership. Uh, you know, I've neglected to promote that in prior webinars, but Silicon Dragon Circle membership is a great thing. Get your access to our webinars, uh, gets you VIP invitations and our videos and our mobile app and ask a VC anything. All right. Now we're going to go to the star of our show, Chibo Tang. Mm. He's a GP at the Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund. And definitely of equal status is that uh, from that is the partner at Gobi Partners China. So mm -hmm. Chibo, hello again. Hello. <laughs> good to see you again, Rebecca. It's been a yeah, while. Good to see you. Yeah, it has been a while. You in Hong Kong. Yeah, I haven't been able to get to Hong Kong. Right, right. So <laughs> the last time I was there was January. Oh, okay. Well, that's not <laughs> so far away. No, it wasn't, and I was there in November as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Two times in the last what eight months? Right, right, right. Yeah, see, things things have really seemed to things are moving in fast motion to me right now. How about for you? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, this is um, these last six months have been you know unprecedented, and it seems like more just keeps getting thrown at us. So that's true. That's true. Well, I like this picture of you, Chivo. Oh, thank you. It looks like it was professionally taken. Yeah, it was at some like photo studio. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. very professional. 
Oh, I'm, almost, in, I'm almost intimidated by that photo. Really, really. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. like, it's like my one good photo out of like 200 that we took, so. Okay, well, it is a good photo. Um, okay, so who is Chibo Tang? Hmm. All right, I, I should actually make this a quiz show in the future, like, okay, if we can guess where you were born and where you grew up. Right. Right. But we have all the clues here already. Born in Chicago, grew up in Boston, Harvard College grad. What did you study at? What was your undergrad? I was applied math um, and economics. Okay. So, yeah, I started off actually wanting to be an engineer, but I, I couldn't cut it. So, oh. I ended up being math. Math is easier than engineering for you, anyhow. Uh, yeah, I guess it's more uh, directed. Yeah. It's more what? It's more like targeted in terms of skill set. Okay. Like engineering, you need like to be smart in a lot of different things, you know? I think that's why I didn't get into MIT. <laughs> but you got your MBA from Cebus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was just kind of like, uh, it, was, it was like a finance MBA. So that was just kind of part time on the side. So just want to look at oh, Part time on the side. Oh, I just get your. Uh, your MBA part time on the side, right? Um, okay. Now you're living in Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. And well, tell us a little bit about your career path. You know, a couple of jobs here before you became a venture capitalist. How did that happen? Tell right. us a little bit about that. Um, so yeah, so uh, born in Shanghai, I'm Shanghainese. I identify as Shanghainese, but you know, I, I grew up in the U.S. since I was three. Um, and so everyone I meet in China, they just think that I'm still an ABC, right? I mean, they're just like, you're, you're still so Chinese, you're still so American. And I'm like, no, I'm very Chinese. I speak like fluent Mandarin, but you know, they don't buy it. Um, so like when I graduated from Harvard, I moved back to China because, you know, I saw the opportunity there. I really want to build my career there and I really want to localize. So I was based in Shanghai um, doing management consulting at Monitor Group. Uh, this was this was way before like their um, acquisition um, by Deloitte, um, and so that, at that time it was still kind of an independent uh, management consultancy um, that was founded by Michael Porter. So there was a lot of stuff on strategy, uh, marketing strategies, things like that. Um, but since I had, I was also you know native English speaker. I was like the one native English speaker in our Shanghai office. Um, they basically u utilized me as like that international consultant, you know, and I so I basically staffed on projects all over Southeast Asia, uh, the Middle East. I don't think I, I think I did like one project in two years uh, in China. Um, and, you know, I, I was sitting, I was doing like this um, urban development project in Saudi Arabia um, in like, and, and and that was like towards the end of my stint. And I was, it was like a six month project. This was back before Saudi had really opened up and started to kind of modernize. Um, there were no movie theaters, no nothing. Oh um, and I was just sitting out there in the fourth month and I was just like, this is not what I signed up for. Um, <laughs> for, for my China experience, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, so I, so I just quit in the middle of that project. I went back to Shanghai. Um, lucky for me, I, I, I managed to link up with, um, you know, another Harvard alum uh, called Tom Tao. So he was the, the one of the co-founders of Gobi. Um, yeah. At that point, we, we met up and he was just like, look, I mean, I think you, uh, you've you learned enough in consulting. Um, it's time to put that to use. Um, and he pulled me in. And basically, I've been um, doing venture capital ever since. Okay, so yeah, I, I know Thomas. I, I remember meeting Thomas in Shanghai back when I was doing research for my first book, Silicon Dragon. And uh, right. I, I, I was, when did you join Gobi? I joined Gobi in 2009. Okay. Yeah, so, so back then when I met Thomas, you hadn't even joined yet. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could, so, yeah. okay. And then how did the, uh, take me through the transition now to um, also go be running the Alibaba Hong Kong Entrepreneurs Fund? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so basically I, I've been with Gobi for 10 plus years, um, like the 11th this year. Um, okay. And so I've been lucky enough to, um, you know, experience that whole career progression within, within one firm, within uh, one venture capital firm. I've right. been around China for 
over 17 years now. Um, and so, you know, the whole life cycle of being uh, a general partner, of, of managing a venture capital fund from like the first fundraise up to like investments, the portfolio management exits. I mean, you know, I've been around long enough to see um, and experience and drive a lot of that. Um, and so like it, the, the first part of my career was basically, um, you know, in, in Shanghai, um, where I was doing all the investments and like a lot of venture capital things in, in, in within mainland China. Um, the Ali Fund was actually set up in 2016. Um, and so for, I, I guess for people who are listening in, um, the Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund um, is a unique vehicle set up by Alibaba um, where they're the sole LP um, and they've selected third party GPs to manage it, right? And so there's an Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund in Hong Kong um, and Gobi is the GP for that fund. Um, and then there's also the one in Taiwan uh, where there are two other GPs. Um, so uh, as the GP, we manage all the investment activities um, and basically, um, you know, manage the portfolio and do all that. Um, and so that started in 2016. Um, and I began to manage that like uh, remotely from Shanghai um, then. But, you know, uh, at that time, there wasn't much going on in Hong Kong. Um, and, or, or, or so people thought, right? Um, and then, you know, as we started to dive deeper into the ecosystem here. And as the ecosystem itself began to develop, um, you know, more and more just kept coming up. And we made six investments the first year, like 12 the next year. Um, and and it's just, you know, it's just taken off. Um, and so I, I decided to move to Hong Kong in 2017. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I was still flying back and forth, but, you know, it was um, uh, much more of my uh, time was spent in Hong Kong. And was that a good move personally as well? I think so. I think so. You know, um, just in terms of my background, um, because even though like I was in denial for 10 years saying that, you know, I'm very Chinese. I'm like, I can be totally local. Um, like, I, I think the reality of it is I am still much more international um, okay, yeah. in terms of background. Um, yeah. And so I think Hong Kong is just you know, somewhat more suited to someone in my background. Yeah. So here's a test for you. What's your favorite food? Just in general? Yeah. My favorite food. <laughs> Spaghetti <laughs> bolognese. <laughs> well, for me, I have, I've had, uh, you know, I, I'll just do the default. I'll just say pizza. But I, I like yeah. sesame noodles. I, you know, that's, it's really, right, right, these are really right. stupid right. answers. No, you, yeah, you get cravings, food. right? I'm very international, I feel. You know, I don't, I don't eat just one type of cuisine. Sometimes What's I crave your favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant. That's tough. Because there aren't like so many big chains out here. There's so many options, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a favorite restaurant in Hong Kong? I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, really, my favorite restaurants depend on where I li I'm living. <laughs> because I just I just go like to the places around me like all the oh, time. Oh, I see close by. Convenience yeah. is everything. It, it's everything, you know. Location, location, location. Oh, I see. Do you get your food delivered as well? All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be restaurants like I live in Wan Chai, right? So there's like restaurants like all around me, and there'll be oh, restaurants sure. like a block away, and I'll order that. Oh yeah, Wan Chai is a happening place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say it's because I'm so busy, you know, sitting on these boards and working with yeah. entrepreneurs, but, you know, I, I think to some degree I might just be lazy. <laughs> no, I don't think you're lazy. A third, if you're anyone who's a board director of 13 companies, and then aren't you a board observer of four more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, you have we're investors, you know, like early stage is very uh, hands-on and... yeah to spend time with your portfolio companies and the entrepreneurs so yeah definitely yeah, yeah. and you're yeah early stage investor in consumer fintech iot and um mm -hmm. yeah some really good hits here too uh mm -hmm. we lab go go van air wallets Th those are all unicorns aren't they these three yeah those three are those three are um you know i, I think Five years ago, there there wasn't a single unicorn in Hong Kong, right? I mean, I think yeah. now there's six or seven at least, like pretty 
strong uh, unicorn companies. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to be in um, three of them. Um, Air Wallox was actually, uh, now it's, um, you know, it, it, it says they're, they're, they're based in Hong Kong, but they actually started in Australia, um, moved, set up a big office in uh, Shanghai. Um, and so, and, and then they also set up in Hong Kong. But um, yeah, that was actually my last deal in 2016 before I really began to focus more on like Hong Kong and the GBA Greater Bay Area. Right, right. Yeah, we can talk a little bit more about that too when we talk about your investing approach. Mm -hmm. um, about how Gobi has actually gone beyond China now too, uh, yep. into Southeast Asia and even the Middle East and Africa. So that's that's pretty curious. Right, right. Any any comment about that? Yeah. So so I mean, Southeast Asia we did in um, we 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 first went out in 2010, right? And so our first office was in Singapore. It was very small. Yeah. Um, and at that time, it was like that, that whole ecosystem out there was you know, quite early stage. Um, the Singapore government had some incubation programs that were set up um, to help accelerate or incubate, um, you know, startups and entrepreneurs there. Um, but there was really this funding gap um, at the Series A, right? And so um, we set up um, working with uh, the MDA out there, Media Development Authority, um, eventually, you know, we moved our headquarters out to KL, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, um, and that's actually where Thomas is now based. Um, and so our biggest uh, office and, um, you know, uh, operations is now in KL. Um, and from there, um, the ASEAN team then also covers through satellite offices and, you know, uh, team members, um, Jakarta, Singapore, Manila, um, and Bangkok. Okay. And so it's quite, you know, um, it's quite deep coverage. Um, we like to say, we like to call it like boots on the ground, right? Because yeah. basically for early stage, you, you really just need to like have people there really embedded within the ecosystems um, and uh, talking to all the local entrepreneurs like every day, basically. Um, because, you know, by the time like these companies are in the news and, you know, making waves, it's probably already too late uh, for that earliest stage investment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we've been out in uh, Southeast Asia for uh, close to 10 years now. Um, and obviously that ecosystem has taken off as well. You know, there's mm -hmm. um, a lot going on, a lot of local uh, venture capital firms as well. Um, last year on, on Gobi's part, we also began to, um, you know, expand into the Middle East, as you mentioned, right? And so um, in Pakistan, in, in Saudi Arabia, um, you know, we're, we're setting up uh, local funds, local teams, um, and for, for us, I mean, it's really just been about, um, pushing the boundaries of, uh, innovation, right. Um, bringing venture capital and, um, this idea of, um, you know, capital being able to, um, promote and spur innovation in local ecosystems, um, mm -hmm. that, that we really believe in. And so like, we've, we've always been like the, you know, one of the first, um, VC guys out in, in these emerging markets, right? Um, because going forward the next 10, 20 years, I mean, it is these emerging markets that will provide the next billion dollar opportunities. Um, and, you know, everyone talks about serving the next billion consumers. I mean, th that's what all of these tech companies are trying to do. Um, and lucky for us, we started out in China um, in 2002 and 2003. And that's really when like that um, VC startup ecosystem really began to take off in China. Um, yeah. And so we've seen that whole life cycle um, of yeah. how internet um, has evolved and how these opportunities um, within the tech landscape have evolved over time, right. um, over a period of 10 or 10, 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we see similar patterns um, play out in all of these emerging markets, right? And yeah. so like our playbook is actually, you know, can be, um, there can be a lot of corollaries between like what's happened in China, what's going on now in Southeast Asia, and what we expect to happen in the Middle East and Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and just touching upon Africa, we also, you know, we, we've, um, we're working together with a company called Tranchin, which is one of the largest uh, low-cost smartphone manufacturers um, in Africa. They have like 70% market share or something like super high like that. Um, and, you know, we're, 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 We've invested in this uh, local um, kind of uh, accelerator program 
um, that has now operations in Kenya and Nigeria, which are the two you know most promising markets out there um, at this point in time. So, um, you know, our, our footprint is is getting to be quite broad. Um, but again, I mean, like Gobi is still very much China centric, um, and you know, a lot of the learnings and um, uh, investment trends uh, that we see in China, we would like to apply uh, to the rest of the world. Sure. Have you raised separate funds for these other markets or are you all investing out of? Nope. So we have like flagship funds um, in China, um, but those are primarily um, for greater China opportunities or, you know, companies that have interest in greater China. Yeah. Um, for Southeast Asia, we have local Southeast Asian funds, um, whether those are in like Malaysian ringgit or, um, you know, other local currencies and also a U.S. dollar fund out there. Uh, oh. for Pakistan and Saudi, we're working with local governments um, as we, you know, as those are the primary stakeholders um, in ecosystems that are still very much at the early stage. Um, and so we work with them to kind of um, develop that ecosystem together. Right. So they're investors in the funds that you have. Exactly. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, well, let's move on. I, You know, this struck me when I was reading about you that you say hmm. that you're a career cynic. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, what does that mean? You're a career cynic? I mean, you're just skeptical about everything? Or what, what does career cynic mean? Well, you know, it's just so many years in venture capital, you realize, you know, you meet like thousands of people, right? Whether they're entrepreneurs, uh, service providers, like people in the industry, whatever, right? I mean, like you're taking meetings, you, you know, people are pitching you, you know, you just become, you know, you just look for, areas where there, there's, there's, you know, that's, that are questionable. <laughs> um, okay. And you know, I guess I've always been a little bit uh, cynical, sarcastic type person, um, you know, even though I do it in, in, in what I think is a relatively easygoing way. Um, although, you know, sometimes when I go to judge a certain startup competition, people are like, oh, Chibo, you were so direct. And, and you know, like they, 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 they were very, taken aback by your very direct questions. And I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> Sometimes just got to call it what it is and, um, and, 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 you know, just got to ask the, the right questions. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good trait for a VC. I mean, you don't want your VC, you know, trying to act like, you know, put on a false face. Right, right, you, right, right. You don't want that. You want to no, have, you want to yeah, have that direct, you know. It. Yeah, most people appreciate the feedback, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, out there, out there in the audience, we want some feedback from you. Um, I thank you, everyone, for telling us that the broadcasting is fine. Thank you, Douglas, for saying that. Thank you, Hal, for saying that, and thank you, Hal, for saying math is much easier. Electrical <laughs> engineering is hard, especially vector dynamics. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to say math was, math was my worst subject, and it still is. Um, numbers just are perplexing to me, um, but words are okay. Mm. I can follow along with letters and uh, music, but I can't do math. Uh, not very well, anyhow. Okay, so what does life enthusiast mean? What are you enthusiastic about in life? Um, you know, I just like to enjoy life, right? Yeah? I mean, don't think too much, you know, just... Um, do what you like to do, hang out with who you like to hang out with. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you hang out with your portfolio company founders? Sometimes. Yeah, actually, I mean, you know, I found that, you know, some of these CEOs, just because you're with them from day one, you know, um, yeah. they you're going through ups and downs, like yeah. good times, bad times. I mean, like you, you guys really bond. Um, and, you know, they come to you for, for advice, to, to ask what you think, um, you know, you tell them what you really think, right? And that's that's oftentimes only your best friends would tell you that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I do hang out with them. What? So what's the surprising thing that's happened with a portfolio company? Something totally unexpected, either good or bad. Right. Well, um, there's you know there's so many stories of you know portfolio companies and entrepreneurs. And like the whole like fundraising process. Um, why, why don't you pick out a recent one then? When this whole COVID situation, pick out right, one. Right. Well, the one the one that the one that really stands out to me is um, you know the the obviously the bad stands out 
<laughs> uh, more more prominently, you know. Yeah. Um, so we invested in this uh, consumer um, focused VR company, right? They do okay. like offline retail um, VR experiences, um, and the company's called Sandbox VR. And so that you know that company was like one of our star star portfolio companies in Hong Kong. Um, they're Hong Kong based, but you know they they're we led the seed round. Um, and Dreesen Horowitz, um, A16Z led their Series A, mm -hmm. um, and that was their first investment out in Asia. Um, and so, you know, the company was tracking extremely well after the investment. Um, you know, uh, they, they began to expand out into the United States market, um, opening, you know, like quite a few uh, stores out there. Um, yeah. And just as the stores were getting open in the beginning of this year, you know, COVID hit. Oh. Um, and so, you know, they, they were doing a lot of uh, like corporate stores, right? So they were putting a lot of CapEx out um, to build these stores. Like they're beautiful stores. Um, and everyone here should go try at some point because, you know, the VR experiences are like literally the best in the world. Like I, I've played many um, VR, basically like almost all, all the VR experiences. I get motion sick quite a bit. Um, and most of them I get like quite dizzy um, and nauseous. <laughs> Um, and so, like, I was never a big fan of VR, um, yeah, but I went to the sandbox, and you play for like 30 minutes, an hour, and it's totally fine, right? Um, and, you know, they have these, um, you know, uh, algorithmic predictor, um, uh, and, and so, you know, they, they can help mitigate some of that motion sickness um, mm -hmm. and, and make, you know, the, the frame rates and whatever um, all much, much faster. And so, so the experience is amazing, right? Um, and so anyone, anyone who goes plays will enjoy it like a lot. Uh, they'll continue to go back. Um, and so they finally got all these stores up um, like across America. Right. Um, and then COVID hits and everything is shut down. Oh, wow. And so you can imagine what it does for like the company's cash flow. Right. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've been, um, you know, uh, Andreessen and, 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 and um, us, we've been trying to, um, you know, to, 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 to get this company through these tough times. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, COVID is uh, very harsh times for a lot of different startups, right? Um, and, I, and I was looking at stats, reports, I mean, you know, unemployment is, is quite an issue, right? I mean, because a lot of startups, they need to save their burn, right? Extend the runway. I mean, they just need to cut people um, at the end of the day. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we went, we've gone through that, right? Um, I think these last few months, I mean, like on, on Gobi's side, um, yeah, we've just been working with portfolio companies a lot. Um, just making sure that um, they're, they're, they're in the right, the right mindset. Um, they have the, the, uh, the right plan in place um, just to get through this. And, and because no one knows how long this will actually be, um, you know, it, it's always, we, we always push them to be more conservative. Yeah, the uncertainty is a real killer. Not knowing how long it's going to last, whether the COVID thing is going to come back and hit us all again and be in lockdown again. Right. When you're right. allowed to travel again. Exactly. You know. yeah. And right. here in the yeah. U.S., it's, it's so different by city and by county. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So today I found out that uh, a hair salon I want to go to in Connecticut has been open since June 1. Well, the hair salons here in my county in San Mateo, they're still not open. <laughs> so as you can see, I need to have my hair done. <laughs> you gotta right. wait so you need to travel cross country to Connecticut to get your hair done. I had yes, I'm going to Connecticut to get my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if you drive, you could you could potentially do that, right? I mean, like the flights may not be as safe. Yeah, that's right. Well, I am flying um, on Alaska Airlines to go back to uh, the East Coast next week, and oh, no uh, yeah, they told me they're going to leave the seat empty in the middle. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I hear the U.S. is trying to restart, right? So, yeah. So, are, have you flown anywhere since this COVID? Uh, hit? Well, Do, no, just I've been grounded in Hong Kong. Yeah, you I, grounded I, I, there because yeah. if you leave, you then you have to be quarantined when you come back, I, right? I, yeah, but actually, like I can't even go back to China right now because I hold a U.S. passport. So, oh. you know, for foreign passport holders, like even if you choose quarantine, you're not allowed in. I see. Right. Oh wow. Okay. Um, but, does that mean so you're going to yeah. invest more in Hong Kong then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm lucky enough. I mean, Hong Kong is actually quite 
you know, it's almost life as normal, you know, other than travel. Yeah. Um, so locally, people are just, you know, they're just going out, they're going to dinners, going for drinks. I mean, it's still, it's quite active already. That's good. Yeah, yeah I wish I could be there. Mm. We're doing, we're doing our Hong Kong event virtually during the Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival. It's going to be virtual on, mm -hmm. on uh, July 9. Actually, uh, you're going to be on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah I'm going to be speaking at quite a few events that, that week. Okay, um, that's good. So, yeah, I think, no, everything's gone virtual, right? Like, and to Everyone. be honest, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of these virtual events just because it just doesn't feel the same. Right. Um, but, you know, everyone has to deal with... <laughs> with what they have. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, I'm going to share the screen again now because we're going to go to questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, all you people there in the audience, time to get your questions ready for Chivo. If you don't have any questions, you know what the thread is. The thread is that I keep going, and then you're going to be bored, so you need to ask your own question. Hmm. Yeah, Chivo, keep an eye on that chat there, see if you spot any coming in. You know, the title of the show is Ask a VC Anything, so you better be out there asking something. Okay. Here's how Kelman, he wants to know. He's always been a realist. So we have a realist and now we have a cynic. Um, and uh, he wants to know, um, have, you met, have you met the two co-founders of Stripe? Um, I don't know. How, where's this question coming from? All right. He wants to know that and- Unfortunately, I have not. Unfortunately, I have not. Um, so Jack, who's the CEO of Airwallex, he's very good friends with Patrick. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they, they have obviously talked quite a bit um, because Airwallex is, you know, positioned as the stripe of Asia, although they're now uh, trying to make headway into the U.S. and Europe as well. Um, and so, yeah, they could be going head to head soon. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Angela Kwok has a question for you. She wants to know what's the biggest challenge in your career. I mean, it seems like everything's been kind of easy for you. It's smooth sailing, but have, what's the biggest challenge in your career? Um, I, I think the biggest challenge, and I wrote an article on this on LinkedIn, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, about, you know, the pros and cons of uh, joining VC at a young age, right? Um, and the biggest challenge has really just been, you know, sticking to it. Um, sticking to it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you talk about it now and, you know, it's 10, 11 years in, but yeah. in like the third to fifth or sixth years, I mean, like, it's, it's, a, it's a gruel, man. It's like, it's, a, it's grueling. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's such a Well, you know what Bill Tai did? Bill Tai had, was on all these boards, right? And it, finally one day he said that he was just living his life on boards and he, and he decided to quit mm -hmm. and that's when he took up kite surfing <laughs> and, and so but then kite surfing opened a whole other uh all these other doors that it was good for networking and he met all these other people and then he started investing in some startups in australia and other mm -hmm. places around and it's it's been good for him i think overall so maybe you're going to do something like that uh she was telling maybe. something maybe. Telling everyone's me different, you know maybe but just maybe you're yeah no everyone's path is different so so like people like a lot of people ask me like how you get how do you get into vc or like you know how, how do you uh change your career or, and and you know i just tell them like everyone's path is different everyone's journey is going to be your own and um you know if you end up in vc that's great um if you don't that's great too right because you'll still find um something that you're suited for or that you would is like do you feel that you're suited, well suited? I enjoy, I'm enjoying myself um, in VC okay. right now, I think. I mean, okay. it, it's a good, yeah. What, what about like your experience with Alibaba? What's, tell us about that. What's that like? Um, no, I mean, we, we've known Alibaba for, you know, many, many years. Um, even before this Hong Kong fund started, um, you know, we, we were working very closely with their investment teams in China. Um, they've actually invested in several of our portfolio companies in the, in the China portfolio. Okay. Um, and so, you know, a lot of our portfolios work very closely with the various business units like Ali Cloud, Tanyao, um, Taobao Tmall, obviously. 
Um, and so, you know, they're, 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 they're like the company to know in China. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, Douglas Lee uh, from Invest Hong Kong wants to know if you could talk about some of your exits and what were the triggers? Like mm -hmm. acquisitions or IPOs or... Right, right. So, yeah, so, so actually we had, we had um, two exits last year, one this year. They're all through acquisition. Um, okay. two, of them, two of them last year were actually to Alibaba, right? Um, and so I think, you know, Gobi has had a long history of working very closely with big corporate players, uh, corporate uh, venture capital or corporate uh, M&A. Um, and, you know, uh, quite a few are investors in our funds. And so just having this uh, strategic LP and strategic corporate network um, yeah. has been um, extremely valuable for us, right? Um, whether that's in terms of uh, just business development for our portfolio companies or in terms of next round financing, um, but also in terms of exits, right? Um, from a corporate perspective, I mean, they, they, they see what we're doing. They, they learn about our portfolio companies early on. They get comfortable with the business and the technology. Um, and then they either um, are very open to invest or to just, you know, acquire the, these companies. Okay. So two acquisitions from, by Alibaba. Mm -hmm. What were those two companies? Um, one was <laughs> called Team Vision, um, which is, you know, work, uh, a cloud-based collaboration tool uh, platform uh -huh. um, in yeah. China. Um, yeah. And the other one was called Dielwanda, which is a logistics company. Oh, I see. Yeah. What are you seeing today in the Hong Kong startup environment that's exciting? Yeah. Um, so we've done, um, you know, like over 40 investments here in Hong Kong. Um, a lot. Including, um, you know, quite a bunch in uh, through our Hong Kong AI Lab project. Um, yeah. Which is like an accelerator that we're doing together um, with Sense Time and Hong Kong Science Park. Um, but, you know, at, Upon reviewing like the portfolio, um, I'd say that um, we're, we've been most active in AI, fintech, and logistics. Uh -huh. um, and those are the three sectors that we feel uh, Hong Kong is especially well suited for. Um, you know, just based on their core competencies yeah. um, and the industries that have been built here over you know decades. Yeah. Okay, when was the AI lab set up? It was actually set up like I think two years ago or so. Yeah. Yeah, in 2018. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's been, we have like a physical space out in Science Park. Um, right. So that, you know, that's what Science Park provides. Um, the Ali Fund and Alibaba, you know, we provide a lot of ecosystem resources. Uh, the fund itself provides uh, funding. Um, and then on Sense Time side, they also, you know, they're also very active in, on the technology side um, yeah. and the data side. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. This AI lab, and you've got Alibaba, Hong Kong Science Technology Park, and SenseTime all involved in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's good going. Was that your at your impetus? Yeah, well, you know, where, where we it's it's all the team, right? So um, I'm lucky enough, and and this is kind of goes back to having 13 or you know 17 board activities, right? I mean, like um, able to help. Um, the, you know, bring in the team and everyone pitches in, so. Right, okay. Yeah. So you're, you're gonna be humble then. Mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, so Sophie Wong wants to know about Alibaba and the Entrepreneurs Fund conviction on e-commerce versus offline retail. So, you know, the online, offline, that Alibaba made a common phrase. I mean, how, what is, what about the investing uh, from the Entrepreneurs Fund? Uh, E-commerce, offline, both of them? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, and, and this is something that I, I don't know if it's necessarily specific to the Alibaba Fund. Yeah. Uh, but just in general, um, how technology has impacted offline retail um, and retail in general. I mean, I just, you know, we, we've seen, um, you know, this wave uh, or this in, like this trend in China, maybe like a year uh, or a year and a half ago now um, in China where, you know, everything was about omni retail, right? Um, just yeah. kind of the, the merging of, um, you know, offline retail, online, like e-commerce um, and how brands need to have this omni-channel approach. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, other, other 
Other things that have that we've seen are you know this concept of new retail. I mean, there's so many yeah. buzzwords out there, right? New retail around like you know um, unmanned like stores or you know uh, like robotic checkouts or um, you know just using all types of technology, um, whether that's uh, like beacon technology or you know video surveillance or just right. heat mapping. I mean, we've seen so many different applications yeah. um, in the retail space of you know, there's uh, just to try to kind of disrupt what the traditional retail store has, sure. has been. Sure. Um, no, I, you know, in, yeah, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. So ultimately, I mean, like in China, I mean, a lot of that new retail stuff played out um, and yeah, a lot of it has been hype, right? Um, and <laughs> a lot of, you know, a lot of money has gone in, you know, the, there's been quite a lot of deployment, but ultimately the consumers are just like, you know what, this is just too complicated for me. It's either the technology is not as advanced or has not made the experience so streamlined that it's, it'd be worth it. Um, or the, you know, the, the efficiencies of the model are just not there yet. Um, and I, I think it's just faster, especially for, uh, you know, um, older demographics. Um, they're just like, I, I just don't want to deal with this. Please just give me a cashier, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, no cash. No cash. Yeah, exactly. No cash. Yeah, but someone yeah. who can like put this 2, 2D barcode in front of me and then so I can scan it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I got it. I remember when I was doing uh, this book, right. it was, there's a lot on, there's some aspects of new retail in here. And I asked Alibaba to explain new retail to me. What is, what exactly, and you know, and here's gets to your point of the hype thing, sort mm -hmm. of like uh, what the single stay thing was another invention. Right, yeah. uh, from Alibaba, but uh, anyhow, they did send me like a real long explanation of what new retail is. It's mm -hmm. real long. Um, right. Anyhow, I still don't really understand it. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I do get it more now than I used yeah, to. Right. Uh, okay, here's another question. Uh, it wants to know, uh, speaking about past and past, present, and future, uh, what about the industry? How's it changed in the past 10 years? And how do you think it's going to change in the next 10 years, are you gonna still be a VC 10 years from now? Um, I, I, I hope so. <laughs> um, I hope to still have a job, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, I think th this is quite a broad question, right? I mean, like, well, is it yes, yeah. industry or is it like the technology or like, you know, traditional industries? I mean, yeah. like fr from a VC's perspective, um, I don't know, like th there was, there, there was talk in 2018 of, you know, uh, th there no longer being a need for VCs because there's crowdfunding, there's ICOs, uh -huh. like yeah. entrepreneurs can just, you know, throw a white paper or a business plan together and put it online. Yeah. You know, they'd be able to raise a lot of money, right? Yeah. And you know, at that point, we did question a little bit. Okay, well, are, are VCs necessary? Um, but, you know, with, with the crash afterward of all that crypto, <laughs> of those crypto <laughs> offerings. I mean, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I, it just, it, it's, I think VCs will still be necessary, especially in, um, you know, um, in emerging markets as well. Um, and even in like the, the, the mature kind of ecosystems, I think it still takes a certain type of investor and um, professional to, um, you know, sort through all the different types of projects and entrepreneurs. Right, uh, yeah. to really uh, support the ones that could make an, a real impact. Sure, sure. So is there, there's room for angel investing, VC investing, growth stage investing, private equity investing, all of these. Right, sure. Um, although I think the, uh, you know, the window may be getting smaller for, for the later stage guys, just because, uh -huh. yeah, because, you know, the, the, at that, at, 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 the late stage. I mean, like, um, how do you, how do you make sure that your valuations are are reasonable enough as you're sandwiched between like earlier stage guys and you know the public markets, right? Uh -huh. I mean, I think a big challenge that you know, guys like Vision have faced is you know the valuations that they're that they're giving out um, aren't are ne aren't necessarily justified by whatever the public markets. Um, and the ultimate, what you know, like the exit, um, might dictate. Okay. 
here's a, here's a good question. Uh, this is something that's on my mind too, is from Silicon Dragon perspective of China, Hong Kong, US, Silicon Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you invested in any US startups that have an Asian angle? Douglas oh, yeah, sure. That? sure, quite a few. Um, uh -huh. We've invested in, well, AutoX was one of our, you know, um, more high profile ones. Um, AutoX um, is this autonomous driving startup, right? Okay. Uh, um, that started off its R&D in San Jose. Um, okay. But the founder was like a Chinese um, background guy who studied in um, Hong Kong, uh, in Hong Kong. Um, and he's since um, moved, um, uh, I'm not sure if it's dual headquarters now, or it's um, actually headquartered in uh, Shenzhen and Shanghai. Um, um, with also, you know, presence in Hong Kong. So that's a deal that we um, found or sourced while it was in the U.S., but uh, is now uh, Chinese. Um, and then there are, you know, we've also invested in a company like Home Court, um, which is still based in the Valley. Um, and, you know, they're, they're like this AI um, tracking um, app for basketball players, right? Um, yeah. For tracking. That like shots and, yeah. and, and dribbles and things like that. Yeah, I remember that company. Uh, the founder, I I met him in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Yes, could be, could be. Yeah, they yeah. they were at um, Jumpstarter, like I think uh, a year or two ago. Yeah. And so they set up uh, a booth um, in our Jumpstarter competition. I um, see. Demonstrating it. Yeah. Okay. It's quite interesting. I mean, like the NBA invested last round, um, and so very strategic, very lots of fun, right? It's a, it's a media company basically. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. remember. Yeah. yeah, when I met the entrepreneur, I, I, I knew he was onto something good. So, and mm -hmm. I liked him a lot too. He seemed very together. Um, right. Had the right ingredients for a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned the Greater Bay Area, and mm -hmm. so what do you think? Uh, you're going across the border, Shenzhen, Guangdu, all these places. Right. 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 No. So, I mean, uh, the last couple of years, China and, you know, um, in, in Hong Kong as well. I mean, there's been a lot of buzz around this GBA or Greater Bay Area concept yeah. uh, to date. And in terms of like actual policies and, um, you know, regulatory frameworks rolled out, I mean, it's still um, pretty preliminary. Um, but there's no doubt in everyone's mind that this is going to be uh, one of the key initiatives um, and in terms of regional development um, for China going forward. Right. Um, and so uh, we're, 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 I'm, I'm personally quite excited about what this could mean um, because within the GBA is uh, Hong Kong and Macau, right? Um, the two uh, special administrative regions of China um, where, there, where it is one country, two systems and how those systems then um, would be um, integrated or you know, correlated in the future um, mm -hmm. could have very interesting implications going forward. Um, you know, obviously we have a big presence here in Hong Kong. Um, I'm very interested in building that presence um, in Macau as well. Um, and so that's something that uh, we've been working on. Um, obviously the rest of GBA on, from like a mainland perspective, um, you know, Shenzhen is, you know, one of the key cities uh, for innovation uh, just because uh, Tencent is based there. Uh, yeah. There will be, you know, uh, a much deeper ecosystem built out there as well in the Nansan district. Right. Um, and then in Guangzhou, I mean, yeah, I mean that's been traditional uh, city, um, but there is so much uh, manufacturing and um, you know uh, a lot of different industries um, out there, um, and so we would envision that these four cities of Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou would probably be uh, the key hotspots um, for uh, any type of uh, early stage investment uh, going forward. Yeah, and startups that are starting up in Hong Kong, that's a, that's a good market for them, the greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. a much larger yeah. market than just Hong Kong. Right, right, right. And I think, you know, there, there are uh, initiatives that the, that the Hong Kong government is pushing together with the rest of the GBA um, in mm -hmm. terms of whether those are uh, virtual insurance um, licenses or virtual banking licenses that could ultimately... Um, have um, overall GBA coverage. Um, oh, I so see. We see that those things um, are happening, are on the way, and you know could be very interesting, right? It really just opens up um, the the market. Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is good. 
Um, okay, we're going to be moving to our networking portion of the uh, webinar of our show. And so we're going to be signing off this in a moment. Uh, but uh, there's just one more question here, and I, I can't allow Alice to be disappointed in me by not asking it. So Alice, I'm giving you your moment. Is hmm. crypto still an early investing stage in Hong Kong? Um, I, that, that, that's, that's difficult to say. Um, I think that there was, you know, two years ago, there was this huge wave of crypto people basically invading Hong Kong. <laughs> like every innovation conference or summit, summit, I mean, there'd be like so many crypto people um, just networking on the side, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> But, you know, after after it tanked at the end of 2018, um, it, it just it's been quite it's been very quiet. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, everything has been uh, much more rational. Um, there's you no know, people don't talk about ICOs anymore. Um, yeah. You know, at, at some point they were trying to, to do STOs, but, you know, there, there is there's less much less of that now as well. Um, I think, you know, I still have some friends that are in the space. Yeah. Um, there, a lot of them are, are doing like trading, like more and more like hedge fund type stuff uh -huh. uh, instead of, you know, advisory or more, um, you know, fluffy things. Okay. So you, you call crypto fluffy? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, like, I, I'm sure that there is, um, you know, applicable use cases um, for cryptocurrencies. Okay. Uh, it just, you know, it needs to go through the cycle. All right. All right. There's... One more burning question, and this is the last one before we go to our fun part of the show. Uh, if you already, if you haven't had fun yet, then please hang on and log, yeah. check your check your email for the login uh, for the next part of this. Um, you should have got, you should have received an email with the login. Mm -hmm. And uh, Douglas, I, if this should, actually, uh, I really hope this works for you this time, Douglas Lee. Uh, I'll be really embarrassed if it doesn't. Uh, but uh, Douglas has the last question here. Um, oh my gosh, there's another one. Oh, there's lots of questions today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you. yeah, Douglas wants to know about the angel scene in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, it's complicated. Uh, that that's how I would I would put it. Um, because Hong Kong has you know very high uh, per capita income um, in turn, and, and there's, you know, a lot of people in finance, um, you know, yeah. bankers, like PE, whatever. I mean, I, I think people with, there's, there's a lot of people with disposable income here. Um, and um, obviously a lot of family offices. Um, and so, you know, the, if you're looking for angel investment, I mean, there's um, many different channels or many different avenues where you can potentially, um, you know, uh, get, get some money. Right. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of like angels with real uh, industry know-how um, experience oh. in investing yeah. in tech, um, the, 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 the patience um, f to, to, to last through like the whole uh, development cycle of a startup, um, you know, it, it's, you, you're going to have to look a little bit harder. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, sometimes angel investors, they call that dumb money, mm -hmm. right? I mean, people get into it just because they have money and they mm -hmm. need to put park the money somewhere, but they don't really know anything about investing. Right, right. No, it, it sounds cool to be an angel, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm an angel investor. It sounds cool to be, you know, part of some startup or some tech um, company, right? And you, know, and you can talk about that with your friends. Um, how much of that is, you know... <laughs> actually warranted um, because most of the people that are investing um, at the angel stage, I mean, they don't have like deal sourcing capabilities. Right. Um, and so they just look at deals that maybe their friends or relatives bring to them and they're like, Oh yeah, sure. Why not? I'll put some money in. Right. Um, because for them, I mean, it's just disposable. Um, they're, right. they're not necessarily looking for a huge return on these. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'll it's, tell it's you what the way interest rates are right now, angel investing may be a good way to go. Right, right. <laughs> Even if you factor in those expected returns. <laughs> right, right, right. Even if they don't materialize, you're right. not going to be that far behind. Right, right. Um, <laughs> okay, what about 5G? 
5G, you know, that's one of the big issues today with uh, Huawei and the new telecom standards. And is this an investment theme around 5G? Are you doing anything around 5G that you find? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I think 5G is, um, you know, part of the fundamental infrastructure um, that will be driving a lot of the innovation um, over the next 10, 20 years. Um, I think China is, is definitely going to be one of the uh, front runners um, in terms of deployment, in terms of application, uh, rollout, um, in terms of uh, adoption. Um, and for us, I mean, it, it's just kind of, um, we, we look less at the, the, the infrastructure part of it. Um, we look more at the application part and the application layers, right? Um, and those can be in, um, you know, like IoT, connected devices, um, basically um, all the things that, um, all the areas that you would need um, for uh, devices to like be uh, connected and talking to each other in real time. Um, you know, we, we look a lot at uh, digital factories, uh, digitizing those uh, supply chains. Um, and, you know, th this is going to be an important element of that. Um, in terms of uh, consumer, um, we, we see a lot um, of opportunity in like the, uh, the VR um, and, uh, you know, uh, more um, high, high definition kind of video streaming, live mm -hmm. streaming um, mm -hmm. types. Um, and yeah, I mean, as, as more data and more businesses move to the cloud, I mean, just having um, that level of uh, connectivity um, and, and speed and, and reliance, I mean, that, that's gonna be super important. Yeah, okay, well, good, good. Uh, thank you everyone for hanging in there with us and most of all, Chibo. Uh, mm. And our thanks to Invest Hong Kong for being our wonderful partner here in San Francisco, New York, Hong Kong. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you what's coming up. Next week uh, we have James Mee of Lightspeed China Capital, and uh, he's going to be on at uh, 5 p.m. And so hopefully you'll tune into that. And then July 9th uh, during the Hong Kong the Start Me Up. Hong Kong Festival, we have these three VCs, uh, Edith Young, uh, Titus Bukowski, Chibo, and myself, uh, talking about uh, the latest internet trends report. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting. And Another then, 8 what? Another 8 a.m. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna get you to be an early riser yet, Chibo. Um, great. Okay, now, and then, um, look at this one. Uh, there's a new book out. It's not out quite yet. It's called Feeding the Dragon. Inside the Trillion Dollar Dilemma Facing Hollywood, the MBA and American Business is written by this guy, Chris Fenton, who I know from Hollywood circles. And then we have um, a fellow, um, Anas Uzaman from Pegasus Tech Ventures. He's an investor in, uh, you know, that new startup, um, that Meg Whitman's involved in, digital entertainment startup in LA. He's an investor in that. And so that's kind of our digital, we usually do a digital LA theme for our LA event, which is usually great. Um, and we have so much fun there, but this year we're gonna do it virtually. And then um, we, August 6th of 4 p.m., because this person is on the West Coast, Chivo, 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, Ask if you see anything. Uh, this is the guy who runs Bloomberg's um, VC fund. And, uh, you know, I've interviewed him and he's opened some doors for me and I appreciate that. So Roy is here. And we'll have a whole, we'll do, be doing these all through August too, not taking a break, but um, a little mm -hmm. bit of a break between July 9, between July 10 and, um, and August 6. Because uh, Rebecca is going to be doing a road tour uh a road tour uh, you'll hear more about the road tour later on uh so quickly if you on the way to connecticut right yeah no the connecticut connecticut's not on the road tour i don't think but <laughs> uh but the road tour will be starting from the east coast yes it will be starting from the east coast well i guess i could count my west coast to east coast plane ride okay mm -hmm. i'll count that okay so tune in to all these content and circle memberships to find out where I'm going on my road tour and check your email for your login for this forum. And there's gonna be a poll in the, uh, in the next segment of this. So 
I want to have everyone's opinion. Okay, so let's thank Chibo for hanging in there with us. And uh, thank you all the panelists for the great questions. And I'm going to do our traditional toast. Uh, I, I get to do it again on the meeting on the Hollywood Squares, Chibo. Chibo, Cheers. I know you're drinking water, but it's okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Okay, see you all online and uh, in a moment. All right? Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.